let's discuss more about calculation now who has to pay zakat that's the first question right so whenever we talk about zakat and calculation of zakat there's two distinct discussions number one is the criteria which make zakat compulsory upon a person we have to understand those criteria it's no point talking about the assets of zakat if we don't know what makes zakat compulsory in the first place upon a person right so we'll first discuss those points and those criteria which make zakat compulsory upon individuals and thereafter we'll 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 you know uh, dive deep and look into uh, the different assets understand what they are and how zakat works on the different assets that are there so of course number one you have to be muslim to pay zakat a non muslim is not required to pay zakat why is that the case simply because look the non muslims they required to bring iman but as i said the pillars of islam are there to bring you closer to allah that's the whole point of these pillars they're there to get you close to make uh, for allah's love to increase in your life for you to increase in your recognition of Allah. When non-Muslims, they don't recognize Allah at all, they don't believe in Him, then these pillars will play no function in that increase. They will, will not add any value to them because they do not have the first requirement, requirement, which is Iman. They don't acknowledge the existence of Allah. And so there's no question of getting close to Allah. And, and so non-Muslims are not, not obliged to pay zakat whatsoever. Neither can, as a result, neither can they receive zakat. Zakat revolves around the Muslims and it's there too. Uh, support the support the believers in their faith. Number two, according to uh, the Hanafi school, this is you have to be an adult, right? What we call being uh, mature, uh, being uh, pubescent, uh, pubescent, being an adolescent, where you've reached the age of puberty. Meaning, salah is not compulsory upon you. Whenever salah becomes compulsory upon a child or or a young teenager, then. Uh, that's the same time when zakat becomes compulsory upon him. This is according to one school, one view from the four schools of fiqh, which is a Hanafi school, and uh, the, the the other madhabs, the Shafi'i school, the Maliki school, and Hanbali school, are the view that no, zakat is payable upon uh, the wealth of children, regardless of the age, as long as they have all these other conditions in them, zakat will be due on their wealth. Another condition, according to the Hanafi school, is. A person must be of sound mind. He must be sane. He must have mental capacity. What that means is a person uh, who um, unfortunately uh, is suffering from some illness, some weakness, uh, and his understanding, his mental capacity is deficient, uh, then zakat is not payable upon their wealth. If they don't understand, and many a times you know this when you, when you look at your own, uh, if somebody has a family member who, who has this condition, then they'll know that they're not in a position to understand what zakah is or even manage their finances. And such a person then is exempt from paying zakah. Of course, in the other madhabs, the Shafi'i, the Maliki and the Hanbali school, uh, such a person is still required, meaning his wealth is still zakatable and it's his guardian's duty to calculate the zakah on their wealth and pay zakah. Right? And then finally, you have to have ownership of nisab, meaning one of the key conditions is Complete ownership. What do we mean? What do we mean by complete ownership? Is two. You must own the wealth that you will be paying zakat on, right? That doesn't mean you can't pay on your wife's wealth. You can do, but when it comes to an obligatory payment, uh, you is, zakat will only be due upon that wealth which is in your ownership. So if I have if I have uh, custody over my friend's wealth, for example, he gave me a thousand pounds to hold on his behalf whilst we're traveling. And it so happens that my zakat year end came and it was time for me to pay zakat. I will not factor his thousand pounds into my calculation because that is not my wealth. So I'll only pay zakat on my wealth. Now, wherever that wealth may be, right, whether it's in a digitally stored, whether it's physically stored, whether it's somewhere in a vault, wherever that wealth is, if it's a zakatable, if it's zakatable wealth, it will be zakatable. Complete ownership, again, another element is possession. You must be physically in possession or constructively in possession. What we mean by that is you must have authority over that wealth. So investments come into this as well. You have possession over your investments through your fund manager. You've delegated possession to somebody uh, to manage your funds on your behalf. So you still have possession and authority and control by activating that fund. And investments are the best form of, uh, zakatable investments are the best form of growth for your wealth. Right. So these are the key requirements for zakat when it comes to uh, the conditions of, of, of zakat. 
Islamic finance learning made simple and memorable.